All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We certainly do thank and praise God for how he has brought us this far. We thank him for uh, the journey that he has given unto us. And we want to welcome you to another broadcast at uh, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where our Bible study, where we are actually pursuing excellence until excellence is achieved. Uh, so right now, we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. I uh, want to remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And we certainly do thank God for how he uh, has woke us up this morning, as we often say, and started us on our way. And has given us a mind to, to read his word, to follow after his word, and literally become the word of God. Uh, Bob, Paul says that we are to be living epistles, to be read of all men. So we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. Um, want to remember the Bible study as well. Uh, that something be said or done to encourage you, to inspire your heart. And as we see the day approaching, uh, I believe truly in my heart that Jesus is soon to come. Um, I know that a lot of people say that, and I'm saying it as well, and we know not the hour or the day or the time that it, of his coming, but by faith we believe that he is coming, and we want to be ready. So to be ready, we have to walk by faith and not by sight, and that means to believe and to trust in the word of God. And the word of God says, look up, for our redemption draws nigh. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you allowed us to come together one more time to hear of your word, to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for our life, health, portion of strength. And we thank you, Lord, for the word even on today that you actually bless us. Help us, Lord, as your word has said, that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We ask you, Lord, that you bless the vision and the purpose of this particular church and churches all around. Help us, Lord, to come together, to be with one accord, to live after and to follow after your rule and your way. And Lord, we ask you to take charge of our service. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Amen. So we want to uh, want to go to the book of Philippians. Want to go to the book of Philippians, uh, chapter number four. Philippians. I'm sorry. Philippians chapter number three. Philippians chapter number three. And I want to uh, focus tonight on uh, achieving your goals. Focus tonight on achieving your goals. And I'm going to make this bold statement, this bold statement, that you literally can achieve whatever you set your mind to. You literally can achieve whatever you set your mind to. And you can achieve your goals or you can not achieve your goals depending on what you set in your mind. And what I mean by that is, if you set your mind toward achieving, that's what you'll do. If you set your mind toward not achieving but failing, that's what you'll do. And whatever you set your mind to do, that's what you're going to achieve. If you focus on achieving, if you focus on overcoming, if you focus on building yourself up, if you're if you focus on doing the things that are necessary on a regular basis, you will achieve. If you focus not on those things, then you'll achieve the goal that you uh, set out to, which is to fail. So God has, has really made us in such a way that we are made in his image and in the likeness of God. We are created in his image and his likeness. And by faith, we can speak things into existence. Uh, and that comes from your mind. Uh, the Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence, 
for out of it comes the issues of life. And when you speak things uh, from your mind or from your heart, which is what I'm telling you now, when I say the heart, I'm talking about your mind. When you speak things from your mind, that which you speak and that which you focus on comes to pass. If you speak positive, positive things will happen. If you speak negative, negative things will happen. Um, you ever been around a person that uh, is, is positive all the time? Uh, no matter what goes on uh, in their life, no matter what happens to them, they're always positive. Why? Because they have trained their mind to think positive. And then you have some people that no matter what happens to them, could be good things happen to them. They're always thinking negative. And uh, what's, what's, what's going on is that they've trained their mind to think negative. And then there's people who are sometimes positive and sometimes negative. And uh, the reason why that is, is because that's how they train their mind, to sometimes think positive and then sometimes think negative. And if the individual is like that, uh, their life is going to be a certain roller coaster, up and down, up and down. Why? Because um, the Bible calls them a double-minded person. And the Bible says that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. So you want, or we want, and God wants us to be positive at all times. God wants us to have a positive outlook on whatever circumstance, whatever situation, whatever problem we're facing. God wants us to be positive. God wants us to be positive. Why does he want us to be positive? Why? Because he wants us to be more than conquerors. He wants us to overcome. He wants us to be successful. And in order to be successful, you have to be positive as you go and accomplish and achieve your goals. Now, I want to say this before we get into the Bible study, that uh, a per God, God has given each of us a purpose. We all have a purpose. And um, the, the Bible says, it talks about a vision. Without a vision, the people perish. In other words, what that scripture means is if, if you don't have a purpose, which is a vision, you'll live your life any kind of way. Uh, a person that has a, a focus, a person that understands that they have a purpose, a person that understands that they have a vision, they will dedicate their lives toward that purpose and focus their lives to achieve the goal, to achieve their purpose. I, I heard one, uh, uh, I was at a, a funeral the other day and the preacher was preaching and he said something that was very profound. Uh, he said that a person that does not focus on a vision or their purpose are living an idle life. And that stuck with me when he said living an idle life. Because if you look that word up being idle, it really means to, to stand by doing nothing, not focused on a purpose. And God wants you to be focused on a purpose. God wants you to be successful. And in order to be successful, you have to focus on uh, uh, being successful. You have to think about being successful. And you have to think about, in, at all times, being positive. Negative thoughts happen to us all the time. And you have to literally combat negative thoughts 100% of the time, 100% of the day. You cannot allow negative thoughts to overtake your mind because you manifest your thoughts. You manifest your thoughts. Now, that's my introduction. Now we're gonna get right into the Bible study. In the book of uh, Philippians uh, chapter, number three. 
And um, uh, we're dealing with the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, uh, in my opinion, uh, according to the writings that we have, uh, was one of the uh, uh, greatest apostles that has ever lived. And he lived a focus-driven life. If you read his epistles, you'll find that Paul was focused all the time, wherein he, he made himself a eunuch for the gospel's sake. Uh, Paul, he, he focused and on the things in life that he accomplished, he achieved. The Bible says that uh, in Philippians, it tells you in the, in the beginning of those verses that Paul uh, was a, a, a Pharisee, uh, Paul was a Hebrew, an Israelite. Paul was circumcised the eighth day uh, of the stock of Israel, the Bible says, and uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. And uh, he, he had zeal persecuting the church. Uh, and uh, uh, he was one that, that truly went after Christ. Paul in his mind, realized that all those things that were counted gain unto me, he counted them but dung or, 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 or worthless, so that he might attain, so he might attain to be Christ-like. And that should be our goal as well. We should go after to be Christ-like. And there was another purpose that Paul had. He had two purposes, two focuses, two visions in mind. To be Christ-like and also to work out and live according to his calling and his purpose. He, he realized that God had given him an assignment and he was uh, dedicated wholly to the assignment that God had given him. And the reason why I'm bringing these things out is to show you there, there was a formula that Paul used in order to be successful. There was a formula that Paul used in order to uh, achieve uh, the things that he wanted to achieve, uh, whereby he was able to deny himself and follow after Christ to attain. Remember when Paul died, he said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. So at the time of Paul, he was getting ready to depart from this world or from this earth. He said he fought a good fight. He kept the faith. He noticed he finished his course. Thank you, Lord. And that's what we want to do. We want to finish our course. So we see here then, um, if we go to Philippians uh, chapter number three and verse number eight, Paul, Paul is talking about himself and, and being positive about his accomplishments and, and, and knowing of himself. And then he says in Philippians chapter uh, number eight, uh, well, let me read number seven. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So his personal achievements, his, his personal advantages. Uh, Paul said, um, I count them all lost so, uh, 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 for Christ's sake. Paul kept Christ at the forefront of his mind. If you want to be like Christ, you've got to keep him at the forefront of your mind. He has to be on your mind 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You literally have to train your mind to be like Christ. You literally have to train your mind to be like Christ. And that's what Paul was thinking. That's what Paul was thinking. And that takes effort. That takes effort because 
uh, uh, there's a lot of negative things that happen to our lives. There are a lot of negative things that, that come into our mind. And you literally, as the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence. You got to guard your mind. You got to uh, guard your mind not to, uh, to accept negative thoughts and, and negative ideas because out of the heart, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And, and, and when you speak something, it, it, it comes to pass. So you've got to be careful what you think and what you say and what you do in order to achieve your goal. Now notice, then, uh, we're going to move on. Verse number 8, it says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ uh, Jesus my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I, my, I may win Christ. Notice, Paul's goal, his focus was to be like Christ and to win him. He looked at Jesus as being the prize. We have to see Jesus as the crown glory, as the prize. At, at any cost, I'm willing to give up anything uh, so I can pursue after him. Uh, Paul, like I said, he made himself a eunuch for the gospel's sake. Uh, if you were to read Paul's messages, uh, he, he literally was saying to, to the brethren, even in, uh, what is it, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter number 7, he's talking about marriage. He's saying that, uh, I would that you all be like I am, a uh, 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 eunuch for the gospel's sake. And, and Paul was saying that uh, uh, if you get divorced or if, you're, if your spouse leaves you, he said, I, I, it's better for you to remain single so that you can give your life totally to Christ. So you can give your life totally to the Lord. Paul, in everything that he did, uh, whether, whether it was fasting, whether it was praying, Paul lived a lifestyle dedicated to Jesus. And also, if you were to read Paul's writings, he, he wanted so much to be like Jesus as we look here in these further in these scriptures, he says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellence uh, see of the knowledge of, of, of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do uh, count them but dung that I might win Christ. Verse number nine, it says, And be found in him. Notice what he says. Not having my own righteousness. Paul didn't want to uh, uh, be found in him with righteousness by works, uh, which is of the law. That's what he's talking about. But uh, that which is through the faith of, of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. What Paul was saying there was, I, I don't want to be found uh, doing uh, works uh, by my own will or by my own desire, uh, but I want to walk by faith. I want to live by faith and, and be found righteous through the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, believing on him, trusting in him, and living my life based on the life that, that is in Christ Jesus. Now, notice what he says. Hallelujah. We're getting there. To where we need to be. Uh, verse number 10. He says that I may know him. Paul wanted to know Jesus. My God. we That should be our goal. We ought to want to know him. Know him in his words. Know him by faith. Know him in an intimate relationship. Know him through experience. In other words. Paul when he said I want to know him. Means that. I'm, I'm going to live so and put myself out there to do what Christ has called me to do so I can experience his grace, so I can experience his mercy, 
so I can experience his power in my life. In other words, I, Paul was saying I want to live so that when I lay hands on people uh, through the experience and faith that is in Jesus, I want to experience the healing. Uh, remember, Paul had an affliction in his body. The Bible doesn't tell us what that affliction was. The Bible says that Paul prayed three times, asking that the Lord would remove it. And the Lord didn't remove it. And notice what Jesus said. My grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, and, and Paul, he then said, Therefore more will I most gladly glory, hallelujah, in, in mine infirmity. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He realized that, that, that uh, the God's grace or the grace of Jesus Christ is sufficient. So now he's saying, when he's made those statements that uh, uh, I am glad now that I, I get an opportunity to live my life through the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Uh, then in other words, it'd be no more I, but Christ liveth in me. Hallelujah. He realized that, that, that he wanted to experience uh, uh, Christ and all of his power and all of his glory and, and get to know him in an intimate way. Uh, Paul, uh, he, was, he was something else. And, and, and we ought to take on those attributes uh, in this respect that, that we ought to want to know Jesus. We ought to want to uh, be acquainted with him. We ought to want to experience his power, uh, experience his anointing experience his 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 love that that he has toward us and in order to do that you have to be willing to walk with him that has to be your goal and your purpose and your focus in any and everything that you do now notice what he said my god notice what he said he said i'll be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but verse number nine I'm reading, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness uh, is of God by faith. Now verse number 10, notice, that I may know him and, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Now that verse 10 there, Paul is literally, he's literally saying that I, I want to, I want to, I want to know Jesus in the power of his resurrection. He was saying that I want to be raised from the dead just like Jesus was raised from the dead. Notice what he says. <laughs> he says, and the fellowship of his sufferings. He's saying, I literally, Paul is saying this. I literally want to be beat like Jesus. I want to experience the beatings that Jesus went through. I want to go through them as well. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And then he says, my God, and be made conformable unto his death. Uh, be uh, like how Jesus died. Paul is saying, I want to die the same death. My God. Now, you know that you have to be going some to be able to make those kind of statements. Not, not everybody uh, is, is, is even thinking along those lines uh, to make those kind of statements. When, when Paul looks at the suffering of, of Christ, even the cross of Christ, his suffering as an emblem of, of power, Paul looks at what Jesus went through, not as a weakness, but Paul looks at what Jesus went through as victory. And what Paul was saying was, I want to be like him so I can attain the same victory that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has attained. Uh, that's how caught up Paul in his mind was. And that's the reason.
reason why, as I was saying earlier, why Paul lived the life that he lived by, by being a eunuch for the gospel's sake, by willing to suffer shipwreck and to uh, travel all over as an evangelist, uh, willing to suffer uh, being beat and left for dead, uh, willing to count all of his uh, attainments or uh, his worldly glory as nothing so that he can attain unto the uh, life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. My God, we have to think along the same lines that by any means necessary, uh, by any means necessary, I want to live like Jesus lived and attain unto the glory that Jesus has attained to. And that has to be the mindset. And that has to be the purpose. That has to be the focus. And that has to be the goal. Now, I know I'm talking strong talk. And I know that, that what I'm talking and saying unto some, some may say it don't take all of that. Uh, that would be a losing type of attitude. Why? Because the devil, uh, he's shrewd. And, and if you haven't got it in your mind that by any means necessary, uh, I'm going to attain uh, to be like Christ, then, then the enemy, is, it gives room for failure. It gives room for falling by the wayside. And God does not want you to be a failure. Paul wrote in Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and being found in the likeness of man, notice, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. We're talking about Jesus. Now, we have to have that same mind. If you're going to be successful and you're going to attain uh, in this life your purpose, your calling that God has given unto you, you have to have a made up mind that I want to be like Jesus at any cost, by any means necessary. And see all of your experiences through the lens and the eyes of Jesus. What are you saying, Brother Pastor? That, that everything I experience, that I, I'm experiencing because Jesus is my Savior. And because Jesus is my Savior, His grace is sufficient. Because Jesus is my Savior, I can walk by faith and not by sight. Because Jesus is my Savior, I am more than a conqueror. You have to have a positive mindset. No matter what state you're in or no matter what you're going through, you have to be in a mode, in a mindset that I am an overcomer. That, that God has not brought me this far to leave me. You got to think like Romans uh, 8.28. All things work together for good to them that what? Love God. You got to tell yourself, I love God. Hallelujah. And I am the called according to his purpose. You've got to see yourself as God sees you, not as you see you or the devil sees you or anybody else sees you. You got to see yourself as God has created, as God has designed you. Hallelujah. And that takes a positive mindset. My God, that takes a positive mindset because what, what, what God has intended for you is for you. Now, I want to say this, that the Bible is all about positivity. Uh, uh, yeah, there's negative things that happen to negative people, but that's in a framework to be positive. Uh, there's positive things to happen to positive people. That's in a framework to be positive. God shows you the choice uh, that we should make. If we make bad choices, bad things are going to happen. And you've got to see that as positive. 
that I, I, I see that, I recognize that, so therefore, I'm going to make positive choices. Uh, if uh, the scripture tells us, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's positive. If I sow negativity, then I should expect to reap negativity. If I sow positively, then I should expect to reap positively. That's positive uh, in, the, in the respect that that revelation is not hid. And, and if you understand these things and do that which is positive, then the goal and the outcome shall be positive. It's a matter of the way we think. It's the matter of the way we think. If, if I should not have a mindset. Now, now I feel the leading of the Spirit. I feel the leading of the Holy Ghost to say this. That some people want to live on forgiveness and repentance. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that some people uh, willingly make mistakes. Willingly uh, uh, don't do what they're supposed to do and expect God to make up the slack. Uh, some people, a lot of people want uh, uh, God to be faithful, but yet they're not faithful. Uh, that's a wrong attitude. That's a losing attitude because God has already established what shall ever a man sow it, that shall he also reap. So when, they, when, they, when a person uh, lives a kind of way or a certain way that does not uh, 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 line up with the word of God but wants God to have mercy on them, wants God to forgive them but they're not trying to do what is right but they're just living on, on repentance, they're just living on mercy that's, 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 that's abusing God and his power and God is not going to allow you or me or anyone to abuse his power, hallelujah my God my God, my God, my God. Now let's, let's go back to the Bible study. We see here, thank you, Lord. Notice what Paul is saying. We're talking about a positive outlook. We're talking about achieving the goal. And as I said earlier, Paul was one that was dedicated. He dedicated his life uh, to be like Christ. And he so dedicated his life to be like Christ that he really wanted to uh, be part of the fellowship of his suffering, be made conformable unto his death. Uh, hallelujah. And, and, and he was just out there by God uh, uh, to, to literally to go through what Jesus went through. Paul had that kind of mindset. Paul had that kind of desire. Now notice, verse number 10, I'm going to read that again. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Notice verse number 11. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul wanted to, 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 to in the end, he wanted to be like Christ and uh, uh, attain from the resurrection of the dead. In other words, he uh, wanted to, as he taught in, in the book of Thessalonians, he wanted to be uh, not necessarily caught up, but he said, uh, those that are asleep uh, shall not prevent those that uh, are alive Thank you, Lord. Those that are alive, I'm sorry, shall not prevent those that are asleep, but shall be caught up. Thank you, Lord. So, so the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So Paul was saying that I, I want to, I want to die so that so that so that I can be raised up. Hallelujah. By God, by the power of God. Thank you, Lord, my God. So he wanted to experience everything that was connected to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and, and not everybody has that kind of faith. Not everybody believes in him that kind of way. But that takes 
a, a level of faith to want to say, Lord, no matter what comes my way, I want to attain from the resurrection of the dead. If I have to die and give my, uh, give my life as a ransom, Lord, I believe you that you'll raise me up from the dead. Lord, if I'm living and walking this earth, Lord, I believe and I'm going to live my life dedicated to you so I can be caught up to meet you in the air. And that's the kind of mindset that we have to have. Lord, whether I'm whether I have to go by the undertaker or by the overtaker, as we say. Whatever happens, Lord, my, I want to be like you. I want to focus in my life to attain that goal. There's a lot of goals that people uh, uh, focus on. Uh, the one thing that we don't want to be distracted is, is being distracted by our not following after the Lord. Uh, let me say this. Thank you, Lord, that I believe that this, this COVID-19 and, and uh, uh, this pandemic that, and, and how it has affected our society and jobs that people have and sickness and disease and people dying and how it puts fear in the hearts of people. Thank you, Lord, that, 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 that this is all a sign of the end times, even to the fact where it's affected the attendance at churches. Churches don't gather together like they used to gather together. Uh, people are not coming together like they used to come together. And, and that's, that weighs on people. That, that weighs on a, a, a person's spirituality. That takes a toll on an individual. Why? Because we are designed to come together. God wants us to fellowship. God wants us to, 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 to be able to communicate, to be able to, to the Bible says, don't forget uh, to assemble yourselves as the manner of some is. But what I'm saying is, I want you to catch my point, that, that this type of situation which we're going through now can, can distract an individual, cause them to be weak and, and backslide if they're not focused on Jesus. It can be a distraction. It can stop you from being what the Bible says, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord and, and knowing that your labor is not in vain. It can stop you from having that mindset if you allow it. So what are you saying, Brother Pastor? Even in this, you have to see the positives. You have to uh, not tell yourself, well, when I get through this, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Life is going to be better. No, you should not think that way. You should be thinking, while I'm in this, while I'm going through this, I'm going to attain and build myself up because God has allowed it. And if God has allowed it, it's for a purpose. And you have to seek God for the purpose. Why did he allow this pandemic? Why did he allow, uh, is he allowing the churches to not gather and to congregate uh, uh, together? Well, one reason is the Bible says there's going to be a falling away. Hallelujah. And there's some people that, that are going to fall away. Uh, uh, hearts of men and women and children are being made known. People, are, uh, uh, God is literally revealing what is in your heart. Uh, a lot of people uh, go through a form of godliness, a form of godliness, a form of godliness, and deny the power thereof. You don't want to be going through the motions. You want to be on fire. You want to have a fervent love and a fervent desire to walk with the Lord. And this test that we're in right now, it reveals your heart, whether or not you love him, whether or not you're going to keep his commandments, whether or not you love his people. 
My God, it reveals so much. So, so what I said earlier is, you should not be thinking, well, what am I, when I get through this, I'm going to get back into my routine of fasting and prayer. I'm going to get back into my routine of, of fellowshipping with the saints. You should be right now in your routine of fasting and prayer and seeking after God and doing what God has required you to do. There's never a time where you should allow anything to take you off focus, to take you off point. It becomes a distraction. If, if you were to uh, 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 be doing things, have you ever did some things and you got great motivation going your way and then you get injured? Say for instance, you're, you're exercising and you got your body in shape and then you get injured. It, it stops you uh, from, 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 from the progress that you have made and eventually you start atrophying and losing the process that you've made or the progress that you made. Why? Because of inactivity. My God, same as in the natural as in the spiritual. If you had been building yourself up before this pandemic, uh, you need to continue to, to, to stay being built up uh, while the pandemic is going on. You can't say to yourself, well, when this is over, I'm going to get back to building myself up because you're going to lose. You're going to be weak. And there's no, how can you say it, guarantee that you will get back. Hallelujah. My God, let us not deceive ourselves. Oh, my God. So you've got to stay focused on the goal from beginning, middle, and to the end. That's what Paul was. Paul was focused on the goal from the beginning, middle, and the end. And he did that through a positive mindset. Everything that happened to him, Paul looked at it in a positive way. Everything that you're experiencing, even now, you've got to look and find the positivity in it. Don't focus on the negativity, because if you focus on negativity, you'll be anxious, you'll be uh, uh, angry, you'll be sad, you'll be depressed, you'll feel defeated. But if you focus on the positive, you'll be strong, you'll be mighty, you, you can get through whatever you're going through. You'll have a positive outlook. Your body will be positive. Your mind will be positive. And, and, and God will give you grace. God will give you strength so you'll be able to make it through. Now, let's look here then uh, at Paul's formula. He outlined a formula by which we all can be successful. And I want to take this next 15 minutes uh, uh, to give you and to talk to you about the formula wherein we can have that positive mindset. Notice then, verse number 12. Uh, notice, verse number 12, he says, Not as though I had already attained or either were already perfect. So what Paul is saying here is, um, Notice, his goal was to be like Christ, to be Christ-like, and his goal was to operate in the ministry that God had given him. So uh, two things are going on that we should focus on ourselves, to be like Jesus and also to work out the assignment in our lives that God has given us. Well, the assignment that God has given you is it carries the weight of the anointing. It, 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 it supplies all of your blessings. When you follow after your assignment, uh, the blessings of the Lord follow you. Why? Because it's like if I were traveling here to California, uh, along the way, they have gas stations. Thank you, Lord. They have gas stations where I can stop off and get refilled to keep me on my journey. Same way, God, when you follow after your assignment, God has blessings along the way to keep you on your journey. Hallelujah. So that you can be successful. 
Hallelujah. So Paul said this. My God. Let me finish. He says, now, not as though I had already attained or were either perfect. That word perfect there means mature. Means mature. Paul says, I got some maturing to do. I got some growing to do. Uh, uh, one thing that we have to be honest with ourselves. And we have to acknowledge when we're being uh, selfish, when we're being babies, when, and we have to acknowledge when we're not. So in other words, I'm saying this, is that Paul, if, when you read his text and read his scriptures, Paul, he was, uh, I want to say, easily offended because he was always defending himself. Uh, telling him, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an apostle just like you. Uh, uh, Paul would say other words like talking about himself uh, that, that I labored more abundantly than you all. So, so he had a little self-esteem issues. Uh, and, but Paul, he acknowledges the fact that, that he had some self-esteem issues. And he acknowledged the fact that, that, you know, that he didn't want people to look down on him. Thank you, Lord. He, he, he says that in his, in his epistles, and he acknowledges it, that uh, uh, there was some part of his body, uh, some people said it was his eyes, that, that, that was bad. Some people say that he was epileptic, you know, uh, uh, in the scripture. But Paul, he acknowledged his weaknesses. Uh, in order to walk with God, You've got to be true to your own self. If you're not good in an area, then you have to acknowledge that. Lord, help me. Uh, if, 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 if something is going on that, 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 that you're not the best person for, you have to acknowledge the fact that I'm not the best person for this. Not, not in a sense to, to degrade yourself, or to quit or to fail, but in a sense to say, Lord, help me uh, so I can let not this uh, uh, be a hurdle. <laughs> you know, there's some people, oh my God, there's some people that think they can sing like me, but uh, I, I know I can't sing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, but I try to sing anyway. But my point is this, there's some people that cannot sing and they're singing uh, uh, to the glory of God, hallelujah, but they're killing everybody else. Uh, the, just because you got access to a mic doesn't mean that you have to sing. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 and you have to come to the realization, that individual, well, I can't sing, but maybe I can talk. Uh, I, I can't sing, but maybe I, I can just make me a joyful noise. Uh, be truthful. Be truthful, be truthful and honest. Now, let me move on. Notice what Paul says. He says, not as though I had attained either were already perfect. Notice what he says. But I follow after, if I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now, he's talking literally there about his calling. Uh, he says, I'm going to follow after it. Um, uh, yeah, I got some issues. Yeah, I got some problems. Yeah, I got some situations that I don't like in my life and I don't like in me, but I'm not going to allow them to stop me from pursuing after that which God has called me to do. In other words, my God, don't uh, allow your circumstances or your situation to hinder or to stop you from pursuing that which God has called you to do. Uh, uh, be positive about it. Realize that other people have issues. Other people have problems. You are not alone. And, 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 and God has given you grace when he called you. He knew you had issues. He knew you had problems. Before he even gave you the assignment, before you even came into this world, and you are not alone. 
Uh, so therefore, don't allow that to hinder you from pursuing after that which God has called you to do. Be positive in your mind. Be focused in your mind. Have it in your mind, saying by any means necessary, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. By any means necessary, I'm going to attain the, uh, to be like Christ by any means necessary. Now notice, Paul puts out this formula. He says, for uh, verse 12, uh, not as though I have already attained, either were already made perfect, but I follow after, go after it. If that I may apprehend, see, he's saying I, that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, that I may uh, apprehend that which I have been called to do. Verse 13, brethren, I caught not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Notice, here's the formula. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So what Paul was saying, here's the formula. He said, forgetting uh, uh, those things which are behind. Your past, living in your past, can be destructive. Let me say this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it more stronger. Uh, living in your past is destructive. If you uh, uh, live every day in the past as though it is the present, you won't accomplish anything. So, so what Paul was saying, uh, forget it. He's not saying uh, you forget about your past, forget about what happened to you. Uh, what he's saying is don't keep reliving it. Don't keep reliving your past. Uh, 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 let the past be the past. Thank you, Lord. Stop reliving it. Stop defining yourself by your past. Stop allowing your past to uh, influence your future in a negative way. Thank you, Lord. In other words, come to terms with your past, those past mistakes, those past failures. Come to terms with those. Have that mindset that, that you're, that you're uh, not living in the past, that, that you're going to uh, 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 not allow your past to hold you back and realize that the past, it's over. It's over. Stop, stop having PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Stop li reliving uh, your past failures as though they happened in the now. And, and that's what Paul was saying. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to achieve the goals that God wants you to achieve, then you've got to let go of your past. Here's, here's what pa, uh, Peter said. Y'all know when Peter was down there in Ziglag, and while he was down in Ziglag uh, fighting a war, he and his men, uh, uh, another army, came and stole their family, stole their goods. And, and, and when they, uh, David's army returned, and saw everything was gone, even their family, they were heartbroken. They were upset, you know. They were all, uh, uh, I'm assuming, doing the Lord's will. And, and when they came back, everything was disarrayed. Everything was messed up. Uh, and the Bible says that David encouraged himself. And what that means is David stopped having a pity party, uh, 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 thinking about, uh, well, my wife is gone, my, my, my goods are gone, my men are upset with me. Uh, he stopped living. He stopped, he stopped thinking about all of that to a point where he literally turned it around to a positive. That's how he encouraged himself. You've got to stop living and what you have lost, and whatever the people have taken from you. You've got to stop 
living in the past of that past hurt, that past guilt, that past shame, the past. When you start thinking about the past, all it really does is relive those feelings. You relive those emotions. And when you relive those feelings and those emotions in the now, it causes your actions to be depressed. It causes your actions to be stunted. Uh, you've got to come to a point where you can encourage yourself. The emotions that you create on the inside, it gives you motivation for your actions. Your, your emotions, my God, I want you to hear me. It creates your actions. Uh, so David had to, when he said, my God, when he said he encouraged himself, he stopped the, by thinking uh, in his mind about the negative until his emotions caught up uh, with what, what, what he was thinking about on the positive. In other words, when David started being positive in his mind, his emotions uh, started being positive. And when his emotions uh, started being positive, his actions became positive. He decided that he was going to pursue, that he was going to go after that which the enemy has stolen. In other words, that's what we have to do. Stop living in our past, not allowing our past emotions and feelings to captivate us so that we can live in the moment. And that's what Paul meant when he said, uh, uh, reaching, uh, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching for those things that are before. Uh, reaching for those things, uh, reaching forth unto those things which are before. So what is he saying then is, is I'm going to be positive. I'm going to live in the moment. I'm going to go uh, after that which lies before me. In order for you to attain your goals, you've got to uh, 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 live in the moment, to uh, 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 live for what lies ahead. Uh, live for what lies ahead. Live in the moment. Live for what lies ahead. Hallelujah. My God. So forgetting about your past, in other words, stop reliving it and then go after that which lies ahead. Uh, 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 don't be stagnant. Go for it. Reach and go for what lies ahead. What lies ahead is the attaining of the goal. What lies ahead is the attaining of the purpose. And utilize, utilize every experience that you've had in your past and turn it into a positive. Utilize every obstacle that may stand in your way as a positive. Now, that's what he meant by pressing then toward the mark. And that word press, it literally means to pursue, to go after, uh, in the face of persecution, in the face of suffering, in the face of obstacles. Uh, the truth is, we're going to have obstacles. The truth is, not everybody's going to like you. The truth is, you, you're going to uh, make some uh, 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 failures or, or you're going to mess up, make some mistakes. That's all a part of success. Embrace that. Uh, embrace the fact that people don't like you. Not everybody's like you. Not everybody is going to cooperate with you. Uh, realize that that not everybody is going to be for you. And when you realize that and embrace that, that's truth. <laughs> My God, you gotta, you gotta embrace the truth. Thank you, Lord. And when it happens, realize, oh, this, this is not something new. This is, this is life. This is what happens. So I'm not going to allow it to stop me. When you have, let me say this, when you have a positive outlook, when you have a positive mindset, it, 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 it counter punches those uh, uh, things that are negative in your life that may happen. In other words, 
uh, your mind is wired to find solutions. When you face a problem and acknowledge the problem, your mind is geared toward finding a solution. When I'm in denial, then my brain shuts down. But when I acknowledge that there is a problem, then my brain finds a solution as long as I remain positive. As long as you remain positive, uh, those obstacles that stand in your way, you're able to maneuver around them because God said in his word that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so that's what he meant. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind, don't live in your past, reaching for those things that are before, uh, uh, live in the moment and go after that which lies ahead. And then when, when pressure comes, you press. Hallelujah. You don't give up. You don't throw in the towel. You, when suffering comes, you press. Hallelujah. My God, toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Now, I want to talk, my God, uh, give me five more minutes. I want to talk to you uh, about this formula. Notice what he says, verse 14. He said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing toward that mark. And that mark represents a goal. You have to continue to press toward your goal. It's not going to be easy. That's truth. Embrace that. Uh, everybody's not going to be for you. That's truth. Embrace that. But on the positive side, there will be people for you. On the positive side, there will be people that will embrace you and will help you. Hallelujah. Uh, all is not lost. You've got to embrace the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen? Now notice, he says, he says, press toward that mark of the prize of the calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now notice what he says. Let us, let us, let us, as many as be perfect. That word perfect means mature. Be thus minded. The let us that are, are, are mature in our spirituality. Be thus minded. Think like this. Think like this. Think like this. Let all of us that are striving to be mature in our spirituality, this is the way you ought to think. This is the way you ought to think. Notice, my God, notice what he said. Uh, let us therefore as many as be perfect, spiritual minded, mature, spiritual minded, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, notice the positive. If you're not thinking this way, God shall reveal it unto you. If you are caught in baby self, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. If you are a whiner, if you always throw in the towel, uh, God has sent you this Bible study to reveal it unto you. <laughs> My God, don't think that way. My God, if, if, if you are an immature thinker, uh, uh, if, if you are one of those kind of people who uh, uh, momentum flows your way until something bad happens, and then you fall by the wayside, that's immature. That's double-mindedness. Uh, you've got to uh, give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And in all things, be more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Now, notice this. Thank you, Jesus. We're almost finished. Notice what he says. Notice what he says. Brethren, uh, 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 verse 15, verse 16, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. That's verse uh, 15, no, 16, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, he said, those those who are mature, let us walk, 
That means to live by the same rule, by the same rule that he said, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching for those things that are before, and pressing toward the mark. That's the, that's the key to success, to achieve your goal. Be mature-minded. And he says, uh, and if any, no, oh, verse 16, nevertheless, where if you have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Now, I want to say this in my closing here. The Lord wants you to be positive. You got to be positive. You got to be truthful. Be truthful. Be positive in your mind. Be truthful and be honest with yourself and what's going on around you. Rid yourself of negative thoughts to achieve the goal. When an individual is building a house or remodeling the house, at first, the house may look ugly, but if they take on the project to remodel it, they make the necessary changes for it to look beautiful. And, and they have to, after they get it to where they want it to be, they have to do necessary things to maintain it. Same way with your mind. You can remodel your mind. The Bible says, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? By God's thoughts. What is God's thoughts? God's word. You got to hide this word in your heart. Ah, how, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word. So, so you remodel your mind or your thought, your, your mind through the thoughts of God. And notice, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, once you get your mind renewed, you have to continue in the word, continue to do what God says to maintain your stability. Thank you, Lord. You can never take your eye off the goal, off the purpose. You can never allow yourself to become distracted. Now, I just got two more verses that I want you to go with me just to hammer this home. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse 24. Well, I like 23, so we're going to start with 23. Notice what he said. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 23. It says, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. Verse 24, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may attain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, have self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, notice Paul, not as uncertainty, so I fight, I not as one that beateth against the air. Paul saying, I run, I fight, not without a purpose. <laughs> but I keep my body under to bring it into subjection. Least by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself become a castaway. And that word castaway means to be rejected. In other words, Paul is saying that I, I keep myself in shape, that, that I may win in the end. In other words, he's saying, I follow after this gospel. 
I preach this gospel and I live by this gospel because I don't want to be a castaway. Notice then, one last verse. My God, you got to stay focused. He told the Gentile, he told the Galatian church, he said, who have bewitched you? <laughs> Thank you, you ran well, but who have bewitched you? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, First Timothy, I'm sorry. First Timothy, chapter number six. And we're done. First Timothy, chapter number six, verse number 11. Notice what it says. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after. Notice he says, Follow after righteousness. That's positive. Follow after righteousness. Godliness. Faith. Love. Patience and meekness. He's telling us to follow after those things. Verse number 12. Notice what he says. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Wherefore thou art or called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Notice, verse 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and, and before Jesus Christ. Uh, Pontius Pilate witnessed a good profession, confession. Verse 14. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, uh, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is in time, as ye shall know, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Now, my point is, verse 14, that thou keep this commandment without spot, meaning that don't, don't allow yourself to be caught up with sin, unrebukable. Live a lifestyle that, that promotes holiness. Until the, how long? Until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't get distracted by the things that are going on in the world that causes you to lose out on the hope of your calling. Be positive. Be positive about this current situation, this current pandemic. Be positive about your past. Be positive about what you're going through right now. And if you're, if you're suffering Right now, press through that. Press through that in a positive way. Encourage yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be truthful with yourself. Look at the negativity. Look at the positivity. But when you look at the negativity, turn it into a positive. Turn it into a positive. Turn it into a positive. Yeah, I may not have all the money, but I'm going to keep working until I do. That's a positive. You, you may not be where you want to be. You may not have attained the level that you're shooting for, but keep reaching. Keep pressing. Don't give up. Don't give in. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to be in your corner. But on the positive, some people are going to like you. Some people are going to be in your corner. God is always going to be for you. <laughs> That's the Bible study on tonight. I hope that you've got something out of it. And I praise God for each and every one of you. And uh, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this anointed word. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible study on tonight. We ask you, Lord, to continue to encourage our hearts and to strengthen us as we see the day approaching. We ask you, Lord, that you let this word find lodging 
Let it find strength. Let it help to convert, to renew, to restore, and to change our mindset to the thinking and living of Jesus Christ. This we pray in Jesus' name. Those of you that want to sow a seed, you can uh, send it to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, or drop it in our drop box, or go on to Tidy. We certainly do thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, tune in to our service on Sunday, Sunday morning, which is Father's Day. Uh, reach out to your father or to your father figure and encourage them. Thank you, Lord, and, 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 and promote them. Uh, give them some positive words. Give them a card or something, piece of money. Take them. Well, you can't take them out to dinner. <laughs> Cook dinner for them. <laughs> and uh, um, our service on Sunday will begin at 9 o'clock. Our morning service will be from 9 to 1030. And then our second service will be from 11 to 1230. Uh, you're welcome to join us here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church.